I was wanting to talk about, it's a simple thing really, just the power of music. Just how strong music really is and how it sticks with you. How it can take you back in time to a moment in your youth or last week or whatever. I mean, it's, it's incredible how music can do that. I've always been very, very shocked and amazed at how that works. You know, if it wasn't for music, this world would be unlivable, in my opinion. It would be horrible. It would be horrible. It would just be so bland. So bland. We're going to take a trip back in time, man, back in the mid-80s. I'd say we're going to start around, uh, we're going to start around 1986. And it's going to go from 86 to 89, all right, in the realm of this story here. I was working at a place called Carolina Pottery. Again, this is 1986. I was 16 years old. Uh, I was in 10th grade. I was attending Olympic High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I went up there, man, and applied, you know, because my, my dad was like, if you want some money, you need to go to work. I worked a couple of other little penny ante jobs, man, when I was a teenager, grocery store, you know, bag of groceries, working at a fish camp. You know, that's something you don't hear much anymore, fish camp. You don't hear that much anymore. But when I worked at Carolina Pottery, that was like my first part-time job that was steady. You know, every day after school, every, you know, even on the weekends, that's when they're really going to work you, man, when you're young and you make crap money. But at the time, I didn't think about that. I was just trying to get some extra money to to buy maybe a guitar pedal or pack of strings, you know, stuff like that. So I went up there and applied. I still remember what I made an hour, man. I was making three thirty-five. That was minimum wage back then. We get paid every two weeks up there, I believe. Yeah, it's every two weeks. I always hated jobs that pay you every two weeks. That sucks, man. Damn. I'm working. I remember they stuck me in the glassware department working there, you know, doing whatever, stocking, really what nothing to it. But, you know, when you would, uh, when, or when I would come to work, I'd come to the main entrance of the mall there. And of course you had other stores in that mall and it was a small, it wasn't a real big mall. You had a, an actual record store in there. I remember going to the record store and looking at, um, cassettes and <laughs> CDs and albums, of course. And that's, pretty wild to think all that's pretty much phased out except vinyl that's that's been making a comeback for a while but cassettes and cds that's kind of a that's kind of a thing that's gone it and i wonder if that'll ever come back i don't know maybe it has i don't know i'm out of the loop usually i'd get there before i had to clock in i'd have an extra 10 minutes or something i'd go in the record store and i'd look and then i'd go and you know go inside the store at uh, carolina pottery that is and clock in and do that work but i remember like the the first year I was there it was this group of people and I really just didn't pay much attention because whenever I got to work it was you know I'd get there about uh, sometimes four in the afternoon sometimes five it was usually five to ten or four to ten I'd work so I would see this group of people that was working there but then I guess about you know six o'clock or something like that five thirty they would get in this van and they would leave I didn't think really much about it they would get dropped off in the the back part of the store where the lawn and garden area was and you could you could come in that way you didn't have to go in the main entrance of the mall you come around back you know they usually had a, a register back there and they had sometimes they'd have a guard back there too security and uh, so you could go in that way go to like a gated entrance and then you go to that the uh, back door you go in but that's where everybody would always leave when you left for the night or whatever you always go out that back door and do lawn and garden and everybody would park employees would park out there you know so when i'd see this group of people leave it was about maybe anywhere between six and eight employees for a first i would say for the first like i said a little while i worked there i didn't really pay much attention i thought maybe you know like a carpool kind of thing i don't know I was like, well, that's a way to save money. You know, that's pretty that's pretty cool. But I noticed the van would drop them off and the van would after everybody would get get out of the van, the van would take off, and then they'd all get off at the same time. And they'd all get back in that van and they'd leave. 
at the end of their you know, shift. One of those people, I mean, they were all really nice. One of those people, I want to say his name was Danny. And I'm just going to call him Danny just for, you know, I want to say that was his name, but I can't be 100% sure. Uh, Danny was kind of a quiet guy. Now, here I am in the timeline here. I'm roughly 16, 17 years old. Danny is probably in his possibly late 30s. You know, you know when you're young, man, you don't really have a, a great perspective of how old somebody is and all that because everybody looks older. You know, you're like, man, that looks old, man. That's probably how I get looked at now. Like, that guy with that hat and glasses, he's old. You know? <laughs> you know, so I'm a teenager, and this guy, he's kind of, he, he doesn't look dirty or nasty or nothing like that, but he just looks like, he looks like he's been through some hard times in life. That's what it kind of came across to me. That, that was the impression I got. And there was a couple of times the certain people out of that group would work the night shift. Uh, that van would come at 10 o'clock at night and pick them up and take off. And I had a buddy of mine that, that uh, was working there. And one day I asked him, I said, man, what's with that van? What, why don't they just drive their car here? What, you know, cause I'm telling you, man, I didn't know I was naive. I didn't know what was going on. He said, man, he said, that's a, uh, they're coming from a, a facility, man. They're, that's a rehab facility. And I said, oh, I said, oh, I, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, they, they can't drive. They, you know, he was telling me the whole thing. And I didn't, you know, like I said, I, I didn't know. Once in a while, man, just once in a blue moon, I would I would talk to Danny. He was he was really to himself, man. He didn't go out of his way to communicate with anybody. Now, he would kind of talk to the people that he rode in the band with, you know, I guess. They were all kind of comfortable talking with each other, of course, which I get it. But other than that, he wasn't really outgoing. And he would just, they would stick him in whatever department. And this place I worked, man, it had, really, man, it was, it was just a big toy store for women. That's all it was, man. It had wicker department, glassware like I work, and dishware, and all this other. Oh, it's, my mom loved it there. I I didn't care for the place, but it was for the time. It was a decent job. It was all right. It is what it was, you know, but every once in a while, you know, if I was working on a Saturday, cause that's, like I said, that's when they'd make you work a full shift, you know, um, I would see Danny and we would talk here and there, here and there, nothing, you know, we didn't get like real buddy, buddy, you know, when you work at a place like that, you eventually try to make some try to make friends with some people about your age or roundabouts that and there was a couple of guys that i made friends with they were really cool and and you know you start to get to know somebody and they're like well, what what do you like to do and of course it it got around between my little group of friends that i like to play guitar you know i was like yeah man i play guitar and i remember this one guy come up there he was super nice he was a tall guy he was he was probably a couple years older than me and he brought his guitar up there one Saturday morning before uh, they opened up the back door to let people in. He brought his guitar up there and his little amp. I was like, damn, he brought his guitar up here. You know, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, because I was like, I wasn't at that point uh, with playing that I wanted to take my amp and guitar somewhere and play for somebody. I just, I wasn't, I didn't have that kind of confidence. But that guy was, and I remember he was playing, um, the only thing he would play that sounded that made any sense to me was the intro for Hold On Loosely by 38 Special. He he could kind of do that pretty good. He played a couple little other minor things that really didn't catch my attention. I was just, I was like, well, he ain't been playing too long. But, it, you know, I hadn't either. And uh, sometimes when I worked all day on Saturday, I'd bring my little uh, cassette Sony Walkman, <laughs> have my headphones, and that was really a no-no. You weren't supposed to do that, but, but uh, I would do it anyway, and when management wasn't walking around checking on us, I'd put my headphones on and I'd listen to like Ingve Malmsteen or, or I'd listen to that uh, Starlix cassette had the Steve Lukather uh, instructional. Remember that? But they had a cassette version, you know, and I would just listen to it just to listen to Steve Lukather play guitar. Just I was just like, holy crap. After working there for 
close to a year, every once in a while I would speak with Danny, right? And I'd say, uh, you know, I'd say, hey man, you, you going to lunch? Because being in the mall, out there you had a, a food court. Every once in a while I'd see Danny, you know, and I'd say, hey man, are you, you know, and I never saw him eat lunch. I never saw him, not that he didn't, I just never saw him actually eating lunch. He would like walk around the mall or he would just kind of maybe go in a store and just look. He'd come back. Like I said, he kept to himself. You know, he didn't really make no effort to be very sociable. And for some reason, it I, I don't know why, I just kind of felt sorry for him. I don't know why. Like I said, there was a record store there, right? So one time he was in that record store, but I could. he just kind of seemed like, you know how they always, back then, you go in a record store, they have the music playing over the speakers and uh, whatever was new and hot at the time, popular or whatever. And, and I, one time I saw him in there and, and he just, he kind of seemed like like he didn't like it. Like, you know, oh, this, whatever music this is, this is horrible, you know. He didn't seem too pleased with it, I guess. I, you know, he just didn't seem like he really cared. There was another time I was... uh going out to the food court. I just got finished eating lunch. And there was a bunch of empty spaces in that mall too that didn't have any stores. It was just like vacant spots. So this, you know, a, a store could come in there and open up or whatever. Cause the main anchor store then was uh, Carolina Pottery. That was the big store. That was the big anchor store that kind of kept that place going, that mall. But like I said, I went out there another time and, and uh, I was, I remember they had like a Baskin Robbins in the food court, a, what was it called? Great Wall of China, like a Chinese restaurant. They, you know, they had some other, like a little pizza, you know, just your typical food court, man. But a lot of the stuff, it wasn't like a lot of brand name restaurants. It was like some of this off the wall kind of stuff. I thought it was kind of odd, but you know, it was something to eat. I was about to walk over to the record store and over to my left, there was this, it was a vacant space, you know, and then recently they just started putting pianos in there. So whatever company this was, they were going to start trying to sell pianos out of this place. And it was so wild because you just saw like maybe six pianos in there. That was it, you know, and it was like a huge sell space in there, a store space. It was huge, you know, but I remember there was this one white, I guess, baby grand piano and it had the, the top was up, you know, propped up. And uh, Danny was in there. And I need to, I need to say this. Danny, he had a deformity. All right. He, he, uh, his left hand. Because I, I always remember, and I didn't catch it for a long time. He would always kind of like maybe hide his hand or put it kind of behind his back or keep it in his left pocket. When you, when you looked at Danny, it was just like you saw this right here. Like that was, that was his hand. He didn't have no, no thumb, no fingers. And then the little like fingers were wanting to grow, but they were like these little nubs where your knuckles were on top of your knuckles. You know, like these little nubs. And that's just how he was born. So I'm telling you that for a reason. When I went out to the food court, I got finished eating. I looked, I was heading toward the record store and I just looked to my left and there was a piano store in there that it didn't like nobody was working in there. Danny was at the white baby grand piano that was had the top propped up. And I looked and I didn't think nothing about it. I just thought, okay, well, he's just, he, he just killing time until it's time to get clocked back in and get back to work. So I guess about maybe... I don't know, a week or so went by and uh, I was kind of talking to Danny a little on a little bit more of a regular basis when I would see him. He come up to me and he said, hey man, I heard you like to play guitar. I said, yeah, man, I love playing guitar. You know, I haven't been playing long, but yeah. He goes, uh, you going to do anything with it? And I was like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't, you know, no, I don't guess I would like to, but not, you know. And he said, well, I was in music for a while. He had told me he had actually played with like Hank Williams Jr. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. When he told me that, in my mind, I thought, 
yeah, right, man. You know, I said, there's no way this guy, there's no way because his left hand, he has no fingers. And he told me that and that I did not believe it. I was like, I just kind of went, oh, that's cool, man. And I went, you know, and I guess he could tell from my reaction. I mean, I tried to be genuine as I could, but I guess he could tell, you know, this, this boy don't believe me. A little bit more time passes by and Danny sees me. He makes it a point to come up and talk to me, you know, which I thought was nice. You know, he said, Hey man, what's happening? And I said, Hey, cause he was, he was really soft spoken. He wasn't like, you know, uh, a very loud person, you know, kind of, like I said to himself, I said, Hey man, what's going on? And he said, I want to show you something. He, he pulled out some pictures out of his back pocket. And sure enough, it was some pictures of a stage. It was an outdoor venue. And they were just, you know, actual Kodak pictures taken with an old camera, because that's all it was back then. And sure enough, there was Danny in the picture at the piano. When I seen him playing at the piano, the piano store, I started to connect the dots. I was like, well, damn, he showed me those pictures. It was like maybe three, three pictures. He showed him to me and he said, oh, man, this is, I told you I used to play with Hank Williams Jr. And I have these pictures and I just thought I'd show them to you. And when he showed me that, I thought, damn. And I was like, well, what's he doing here? And why is he in rehab or whatever? You know, like I said, that's a world I've never been in. I know nothing about. And I was just kind of dumbfounded. At, at the time so and uh i was stunned to say the least when i saw those pictures i was like yep that's him he was there and so then i you know your your brain tries to rationalize a different way of thinking or something i was like uh maybe he's just sitting behind the piano maybe he's not really playing it maybe he just you know hey take my picture you know but you can look at a picture and you can tell if it's legit or not. I mean, nowadays people Photoshop everything. You know, there's all kind of crazy things that people do that you think it looks real. It's not real at all. It's fake as hell. But this is back in the day when none of that was going on. And so I looked at the pictures and I said, wow. I said, yeah, man, you, you're up there, ain't you? He said, yeah, man, I told you. Now, he didn't look at me and go, yeah, I told you, man, you didn't believe. He wasn't like that. He goes, yeah, man, I told you. That's what I, I did. And I was, I lived that life for, for quite a while. So then I was wanting to ask him, like, well, what was it like? And this and that. And he, he kind of, I got the impression he really didn't want to go into that and really talk about it. Maybe that brought up some dark things for him, you know, and maybe that's what led him to to do some things that he had to go to rehab, which I'm, I'm glad he was there. Where is he at today? Man, I have no idea. I don't know. I, I you would, uh, I saw him and a, like a few other people in that group that would get out of the van, uh, whenever they come to work. And, um, after some time went by, you didn't see them no more. I guess they got released from, from the facility and they went to go live their lives and whatever path they went down is what they went down. But, but, he showed me the pictures. I knew then he was telling the truth. And uh, I was like, wow. I was like, he's in a band playing like the, I guess you call it like uh, maybe boogie woogie style piano. But in my mind, I was like, how's he doing that? Because he only has one normal hand. How's he doing the other part with his left hand? How is that? How's he doing that? About another week or so went by, and again, it was on a Saturday. I went out to the food court to get me some lunch. He was over at that piano store again, and I looked. This time, I walked over there. I said, hey, man. I said, you find you a nice piano there? And he he acted like he wanted to play it, but then he like he kind of hesitated. Like, I don't know, maybe playing the piano opened a lot of doors for him as far as partying and stuff. And maybe, you know, he couldn't control his temptations or urges back then. I don't know. So he, but 
ironically enough, and I'm, I'm not making this up, man, he put his hands down there, and I saw him take his left hand, and he put it down. Like I said, he didn't have, you know, I explained to you how his hand was. He just took it down, and he rolled it and hit a couple of bass notes down there on the left side, and he did like this run. It was like a country blues kind of run, and I thought, and it was just really quick, but when I heard that, I thought, oh my God, it was, I knew then he was legit. Not that I didn't think he was before. I didn't think he was before he showed me the pictures. I mean, when he just told me that, I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. When he did that little run and, and it was just a few seconds and, and, uh, I was just like, holy, I said, dude, play something else, man. It, it was awesome. You know? And he said, nah. And he walked away. He walked away. And so, but it just goes to show you, man, how powerful music is. I mean, he was going through a hard time in his life, but he still went to that piano and maybe it made him feel better when he did that. You know, maybe he went over there other times when I wasn't around and he played and it made him feel better, you know, but it wasn't long after that, man. I never seen him again. Never seen him again after that. And, uh, but I just remember that story. I just, I remember when he told me that and I was like, uh, that just goes to show you, man, you can't judge a book by its cover. And I know, well, for me, I've been guilty of that more than once. You know, when he told me that he was in a band with Hank Williams Jr., I judged him. I was like, nah, nah, dude, no, you're not. Nice try, man. But uh, he did. He showed me the pictures, and sure enough, there it was. And there was a lot of people there too. I mean, it was a. It wasn't like some little picnic. It was a major concert. And so, how long he'd done that for? I don't know. But I know for that moment, especially with those pictures, he did it. So they don't just take. You know, back then, musicians and artists or whatever, they don't just take anybody. They 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 have the little circles that they get people from. And I think nowadays people don't even audition. They just, you got to be in that clique, in that circle of uh, qualified musicians that, hey, so-and-so needs a guitar player. Oh, yeah, well, hang on. I got a guy's phone number. You know, back in the day, you would audition for something. Uh, you know, not anymore. So I thought that was a cool story that I wanted to share that, that uh, you just never know. But I think, I still think music is very healing. It is for me. Uh, everybody's different. Music is subjective, man. It, it means different things to different people. But I think, I, I feel it's very healing. And it's got me through a lot of situations. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that story. If you enjoy uh, content like this, man, and uh, enjoy this channel, please give us a thumbs up, man. And leave a comment.